You finished scraping the gum off that lounger or what? Uh, now we're going to be moving into our main topic. We're going to be talking about the Blue Beetle movie. Uh, so spoilers ahead if you haven't seen Blue Beetle. I don't, I mean, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's on HBO Max. You've had enough time, I think. Yeah, it is on, video, on, on HBO Max now, which is cool. I'm glad that they put it out there. So we're going to be talking about a few different things. Uh, the I guess we're going to break it up into a few different things. We're going to talk about the story, the actors and the performances, the direction and the look of the film. And then we're also going to talk about how good of an adaptation this is of some of the Blue Beetle comics that we've read. So let's kick it off. Well, Josh, you're on the first chair for some reason. I don't know how you ended up there. Um, what do you think? I guess we'll do real quick overall, like just quick thoughts on that, and then we'll dive into the specifics. Josh, what did you think overall of the film? Loved it. Loved it. I these you're gonna kill me for saying this. These non Snyder DCEU movies are just fun. The Flash was fun. Blue Beetle was hella fun. My daughter and I laughed throughout the whole thing. Um, it's just it's great and it's very heartfelt. Um, I really I I like the way that they take they they invert the trope of a standard superhero movie that is all about the secret identity. And in this one, it's just like, nope, his whole family knows. And they're, they're the reason he's a good superhero. Yeah. And uh, I just, I, I loved it. I, I just, it was great. It was a great time. I really, really hope, because I know it didn't do great, I think box office, but I hope it does well on streaming that they do another one, because I think that cast deserves it. Yeah. And I want to see Ted Cord. <laughs> so um but anyway yeah loved it it was yeah exactly oh nice. here's dead cord oh. <laughs> um, thank you thank you Whew, i'm good <laughs> we'll go to kyle next kyle any thoughts i haven't seen it so i know so you said you haven't seen it but what from what have you heard i think they... i've heard it's good it's like the only thing bad about it was the fact that it did, it did not get the the advertising that it deserved like it was like yeah. shazam uh yeah like the second shazam shazam second shazam i thought it was awesome but yeah it did not get the advertising or announcement that it needed to that's why everyone's yeah. like saying it's such low budget film it's like you guys aren't doing shit to advertise your film you're hurting yourself it's like right and i know I, the actor as i've seen like i, I i'm on i've seen all five uh, seasons of cobra kai so i know he was uh, when, I, when i heard he was cast as jaime i was oh, like okay yeah. i'm in for this 100 percent. cool um jeff what about you uh, I super enjoyed it. Uh, I liked it a lot. Way better than the Snyder stuff. You're right on there, Josh. Oh, yeah. uh, Daniel, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Aw, <laughs> oh, Daniel, he's out. He's out. He's done. 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 He's uh, yeah, I, I thought it was. I thought it was super fun. Uh, it's uh, the acting was great. Um, yeah, I, just to keep it general and quick. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Super right. fun, Clay. I loved it. I mean, it had um, all the great beats. It had I, the main thing, like Josh said, is the is the identity thing. Is it just throws it out the window. It makes the family aware. You see his transformation with the family. So they go through everything with him. Everything else in there we've seen in other movies, but they make the right choices in the way that this is laid out. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I mean, you're going to like the half mask you, we've seen, you know, Spider-Man and Tony Stark, just so you can see the acting, mm -hmm. you know, the way that they did mm -hmm. with uh, Hayden Christensen and the, um, Obi Wan show, you know. Yeah. Once you take that helmet off, you could see the actor, so he could act, and that's what really made the ending work. I mean, you've got there it is, nice. <laughs> Ted. I gotta, I gotta track that down. <laughs> I love that they kind of uh, that they do tie in even the OG uh, pre DC, yeah, uh, Blue yeah. Beetle is referenced. Yeah, yeah. 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 so yeah. cool so, that they they really knew their history. And even though it's not in El Paso, he does live on El Paso Street. Like all the little details were great. The color scheme and aesthetics of the of the neon purple blue all kind of together is just really neat. Like I'm trying to think of anything bad about it, and it's it, it it's just that not enough eyes got on it. And I hope that this gets a chance in James Gunn's universe. Yeah, same. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with all you guys. I love this film. It was really fun. 
Uh, I obviously uh, I'm part of an audience that can relate a lot more to a lot of the stuff that's happening on screen, like which is good. Like yeah. it's great, you know. Yeah. One of the things I noticed was because it was Thanksgiving and we went to see like I went to my we all got together as a family and you get to see like the little nephews like every time George Lopez called uh, um, Jaime Cabezon like. That's what we call the kids because kids are when they're little they that means big head, and when kids are little they have big heads so we just call them big you know like <laughs> so like I call all my little nephews the same thing so like it's it's like just that um like the music on this oh man every every single song was like something that I've heard just kind of growing up all throughout so Molly we, Crew I, I did watch this with uh, so <laughs> listen. Uh, as part of growing up is me visiting some uh, less reputable joints and Motley Crue, <laughs> specifically that song, uh, is something that would be on heavy rotation on the playlist. Um, all right, let's move into the story specifically. So if you guys want to maybe mention some of your favorite beats and we'll just kind of go around. So we'll go back to Josh. Well, I was, I was just going to say, I mean, not beats per se, but to, to me, the mark of a, of a great movie with good world building and characters that you're invested in is when there are plot holes and you just don't care, right? So like they're, they're kind of, and these are super minor. I'm not being nitpicky because I really didn't care. But like one is at the, at the beginning when uh, Jenny lifts, uh, I don't know his character's name, Sanchez, Guillermo, when she lifts his badge, right? That's not his name. <laughs> I know, I know. Fuck. Um, it's Sanchez. I really like Jamie. No, anyway. Um, when uh, when she lifts his badge to get into his lab, how does he get back in later? Right. Right. So that's one. And the other one is why at the end can Jaime not fly to the ship? Like that made no sense to me. Like, well, they said wing damage. At one point, oh, like okay, all right. So it is kind of explained. Okay, yeah. but anyway, yeah, but like we run out of juice. Yeah. Okay. So those are two minor, like weird plot things. I was like, I don't understand, but I don't fucking care. It's a great movie. It's a lot of fun. The the all the characters are are wonderful. I mean, I, they're the only. Well, we'll get to the actors in a minute. Um, let's see plot points. Um. I, I I really like the fact that the scarab picks Jaime, but they never they, there's never any backstory to it. There's never any, oh, it's because of this, this, or this, right? It's more just like it chooses him, and then the two of them have to figure it out together. Yeah. And I really like the end point where it comes back around and says, We're not you're not a killer. Right. And it just like, it's like at that point you realize they've meshed, like the two of them have become one. And it was just, it was a beautiful way to kind of bring that back around. So yeah. now Kyle, I know you like all things you read the Wikipedia for this. Yeah. Uh, what yeah, did I, I, and I know the story is pretty simple and straightforward, but what did you think of just like the overall summary when you looked at it? I thought it was interesting. Like, I'm, I'm glad they actually you know. Like, they like I think Clay was saying. Like, the fact they touch, you know, they bring in the whole lineage of the Blue Beetle, and there he goes. <laughs> no, no, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, uh, you know, they have they mentioned Ted, they mentioned Dan, the original whole thing. Like how, and they mentioned how the, the Scarab worked and gave Dan. Or that's what, how it worked in the comic books. It gave him the superhuman powers, but when Ted got it, he didn't. That's why he made all the you know the technology and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I like the fact that like you know even like the the villain is based on what was it a uh, not brother. Victoria, yeah. Oh, Omac, Omac, Omac. Yeah, yeah. It was Omac, and based on that kind of stuff. So, like, oh, they were tying all this other stuff in there. So it's like, it was nice, and you know, and I don't know. It, just, it, it, it for me, it even with the clips I've watched on YouTube, it they it felt like they stayed true to like them trying to be like very DC instead of trying to make their own little thing of it. So, nice. yeah. Cool, uh, Jeff. Yeah, plot wise, uh, I mean, it's a very basic kind of superhero story. I enjoyed uh, the. I really enjoyed um, Susan Sarandon's like, like she plays a great bad guy, you know. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed the Jaime's kind of maturation throughout the it, it, with my roommates, oh. uh, and so they were like, uh, "Is this a Marvel I mean, movie? It, Are you sure?" This 
sorry did did you guys hear that i keep going on yeah, sure. can you repeat out. that yeah sorry can you repeat that last part oh uh i don't i don't even remember what i said i i just uh i was i was like i enjoyed uh jamie's uh jaime's maturation process throughout yeah, the okay. movie uh um uh and that uh it's it's just it doesn't take itself too seriously right really is that yeah cool clay uh, my favorite uh, story point is the fact that they shit on Reagan in this movie. I loved that. <laughs> they and did, it, yeah. It was so good because, like, if you go through um, uh, those scenes and you and and you see the subtitles, it has Reagan speaking as, does, as yeah. all the fucking shit he did down there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and other than that, like, I mean, it is a pretty basic origin story, but it drops little. Like if you're a super fan like we are, it the the nuggets in it like it hints at who Ted Cord's wife is that she's Brazilian and she's passed away. Does anyone else think it's fire? In Justice like, League? Oh, I did not think that. But that I didn't even sense. think of that. Like I didn't think that far because I did. I mean, I, we, yeah. the actress that, that plays uh and is Brazilian and she does speak Portuguese at some point, like when they're in the helicopter. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is. A, a bit of a like you're not expecting it, right? Suddenly, she's that'd be cool. Chance. Maybe maybe she can take on the man, the fire mantle in the future. If like I don't know, I haven't read much Jenny Cord, so I don't know. Yeah, uh, that it's just all the like I loved George Lopez um, also being very technically minded. Like he's also yeah. part of that tech world, so he can also kind of like it makes me want a sequel because I mean, shit, what if? What what if we get to that point? We get to see fire come back. Uh, maybe that's why she appears dead uh, at the end credit scene. We get word from Ted Cord mm -hmm. that he's alive and he's looking for his daughter. Um, well, there it is. I, there want it is. The, I want the more of the background story on the grandmother because she was. Oh bad. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know she's yeah. amazing. <laughs> Nana for the win. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I. It was just all those little little nuggets that I loved the most of all because the story is pretty much an origin story, yeah. uh, but I do love how they say take your pain and turn that into power, and yeah. then and then you grieve afterwards. Like that was a really uh, great emotional. Point. It was very hard. Yeah, and, and, if, and if they if they had not, oh, I'm sorry, Danny. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say like I when when the grandmother says this is not the time for grieving. We do that later. For me, the beat that was really important is right when they're done, she's like, now we cry, right? And and that was so important. And I love that they included that in the movie. Yeah. So and the villain death was awesome. Oh. Like just dragging her into the fire. Fuck. Yeah. Before <laughs> he that was like that's how my mom went out. That's how you're going out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now I I also really appreciated this the story. It's it's very simple, but I I like a few things that are that really stood out to me. First of all, uh, there's a lot of heart in this movie, and there's a lot of tough stuff to watch. Like you see Hyman's dad pass away, yeah, and like how they like that was rough to watch. Yeah. Like, um, I I also really think it's interesting how the the story kind of inverts where instead of Jaime having to rescue his family, they have to rescue him and mm -hmm. kind of get all the resources. Like, the, you know, uh, I, I love all, like just them going to the, the beetle and the, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, so it's, it's really fun. Like there's a lot of fun here, but there's also a lot of heart. The moment when Jaime reconnects with his dad via the beetle and oh, he's man. leading up to the, the touching of their fingers as well. Like in getting his powers back. Uh, and yeah, I just want to give props to like one other thing that stood out to me in this is and I was kind of shocked to read this was supposed to go straight to streaming. It, it was going to be a max and then they released yeah. it in the theater. The effects in this are so much better than in the flash. I'm sorry, but they are. 100%. The, moment, the moment that stood out to me is when he sees his dad and that moment and behind were just that landscape of candles. Mm -hmm. I like I paused it. And I was like, that is beautiful. Like mm -hmm. it was just it's a, it was a very, it's like they understood what the effects needed to do here and the flash didn't in a lot of ways. And so, mm. I don't know. I love that. I also want to give props, you know, 
you guys have said, and I agree, that the story is pretty basic. But I feel like the story had to have all those beats because it really is playing with the tropes of a superhero movie, right? We're yeah. going to not do this, the identity because it's about his family knowing this. They're going to rescue him, right? It's like it had to have all those beats so it could yeah. riff off of them to a certain yeah. degree. And, um, and I, I do love the ending of uh, let's find out why the bad guy is bad. Like they were able to show that in a montage yeah. Yeah. and give him like the like almost a sense of closure in the way yeah. his character ended, and that was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's I, also I, just part of uh, like he's a consequence of all the evil things that she's been doing. Uh, which I like. I don't mind a villain not being redeemable. Like not everyone has to have the nuance of like Thanos or Loki, right? Like it's okay to just be like. Uh, Oh, what's the Guardians villain? The evolutionary? Uh, high evolutionary? Yeah, it's okay to just be like a complete asshole. <laughs> and I think that's kind of what they went for on this one. So, um, cool. All right, let's move on to some of the cast and the performances. If you guys have anything on that, feel free to bring it up. If not, we, we don't. you don't have to come up with something on the spot. But uh, I'm going to go back to – let's go and start with Clay this time around because I know you guys step away for a second in a minute. So let's start with you on the, the characters. Any – I mean, George Lopez that. steals the show. I mean, he's yeah. got the best dialogue. He's got the truck. He throws his tech at the villain in such a cool that way. That is amazing. I, I was like, I was like he that just that hit him with the truck, and it was like, boom. Yeah. I was like, that was awesome. And yeah, he, just thought he watches cool. Fast and Furious, of course, because... <laughs> family <laughs> family Go yeah on. i mean the the fam the family stands out like i love his relationship with his sister and she gets him a job and just i could only imagine the actress having to do the scene where she talks about going to the toilet where they get fired from work <laughs> <laughs> <It's just amazing. laughs> but it but it is that brother sister relationship because they have that dialogue that is just raw yeah. like that and they just kind of like get at each other but still love each other you know, uh, it was the love in the family that stood out the most that was just like, wow, that's just like so nice to see. But then even when they had problems, they were still together. Like, the, mm -hmm. like I'm trying to think of a Marvel family that would go try to save their superhero family member. And I don't think there's that storyline that exists in Marvel. The I closest mean, is probably Guardians 3 that they're trying to, you know, rescue Rocket. Rocket but that's. Yeah. I get, I mean, it hasn't been done, but I could definitely see all the side cast of the MCU Spider Man going to save him, which they kind of do actually in No Way Home, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Too bad they don't know who he is now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> wah, wah. Well, I mean, um, what, I mean, they haven't done any FF. If they ever do an actual good FF movie, that would be something like, you know, it's the family. They are the first right. family of Mars. Right. So yeah. They, yeah. I guess Roger, Roger, Roger Corman. Yeah. Roger Corman. Like, I'm, Quantum the cons Mania have come out. close in, in Miss Marvel. Yeah. Oh, Miss Marvel. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I guess yeah. I need this. I still need to see that. You guys need to watch the Marvels, and I think a lot of the good things from this movie, I feel like, translate over to the fun of that mm -hmm. film as well. Okay. So maybe once y'all yeah. get to watch it, we'll we'll talk about that as well. Okay, Jeff. Any any standout characters, performances, anything? Uh, so I watched this movie with my roommate who grew up in Mexico and knows a lot more about. Uh, just like the actors and stuff, he like the, every time. Every time the dad was on screen, he was like, "This actor's so amazing in Mexico," uh, he, and he would be like, "I wish you, I wish you," because I don't speak any Spanish hardly. And he was like, "I wish you could speak Spanish so I could show you all these movies that this guy is in," because he's just like, he he was over the moon about the dad actor. I mean, that and, yeah, and Damien, without Damien having any, car. yeah, yeah, and uh, and 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 I agree. I was like, oh, he's done, he's done a great job. You know they. As somebody, I'm gonna slightly pivot. At, I I grew up. My parents raised me to be as white as possible because they didn't <laughs> want me getting picked on. Uh, and there wasn't a lot of like great representation like as I was growing up. So I, it was refreshing to see a movie like this. You know, when they say representation matters, and you know, that whole family dynamic. In that, you know, I did grow up with that kind of family dynamic. But they were just like, uh, learn to speak English. You know, watch you watch GI Joes and and your Transformers, and that's ha how I got to being me today. Uh, but um, you know, I, I do appreciate this kind of movie for younger folks who are uh, of you know 
of uh, Hispanic descent or whatever, uh, getting to see this, you know, a positive family dynamic where, you know, uh, they were, they were every, every single one. I'm, I'm not a big Pez fan, honestly. Uh, he's a little obnoxious for me, but uh, I, I did enjoy him a little bit in this movie. Every, 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 all the casting was great. Is it because he called Batman a fascist? Yeah, one hundred percent. Was like, <laughs> out of here, Lopez. You and your stolen jokes. <laughs> oh, hey, whoa! That's a deep. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> um, and right. she's well, random. Like to go back, she one. Uh, she's very. She could be very scary when she needs to be, and. Uh, yeah, that's well. Actually, that's, I'll just admit one. I was gonna. She has like her. There was a scene where she grabbed something, and I was like, "Oh, her hands look disgusting." I think that was makeup, but you know, whatever. Anyway. Uh, um, yeah. Kyle, I'm gonna ask you a different question. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Like, so, so you know Solo Madureña from Cobra Kai. Yeah. What do you think he brings to that show that makes it like that? Um, popular because i think that show like not everyone is on board with cobra kai but the people that love that show like they really love that show yeah well he's it, it, also a young actor he's also bringing the youth part of it too it's mm -hmm. not you know he, he shows he can do action he shows he can do humor you know it, it's also the relationship he did with him he he, and he makes bonds with both dan uh, with uh with johnny and uh daniel in the series he yeah. becomes both their protege you know or, or yeah and so it's like it's he works so well and so bringing him into the role of unknown like you know, at the very beginning, he's a, he's a kid who gets picked on. Like you know, he and he wants more, and so he meets Johnny and kind of gets down the road of Cobra Kai level a bit. But then he ends up, you know, and dating his daughter, and he has a fall. And he and, and then by second, and then the second season, he ends up falling, gets kicked off the stairwell, and ends up almost breaking his back until Johnny helps him recoup. And then he has a redemption arc where he trains with Daniel, gets back with his daughter, and then he's having to go back and forth between Daniel and Johnny, and then until they merge all together. So he has like this. It was kind of like this, like, you know, he starts off like, you know, I want more in my life. I graduated college. I want more and ends up finding the, the scarab and then eventually becomes the hero, like, out of this, yeah. you know, kind of story arc. So it's like you know, he, he was fresh off. I think it was really fresh. Just I think Cobra Kai was his first thing. And he comes off in five seasons. Yeah. Like years of stuff. And now, he, now he's he's getting a little bit more uh, notoriety. But now it, that, that it was because he they showed how well he can act in that TV series. That I think he brought not just the, the, the nerd culture, but just the youth culture, a new fresh aspect for the film. Yeah, if you go back to watch the the YouTube season, which is the first one, like yeah. he's he's a like a little boy, like pretty much like uh, he, you know. So yeah, I mean, he, get, he gets he gets he's a little and like he goes from getting his ass handed to him every damn time to becoming a little bitch at the end of the yeah. first season because of how much he thinks you know, like you know he thinks that like uh, Johnny's son is taking the daughter away from him, so he just goes, oh, "We're gonna go." You know, it's, it's no mercy. You know, I'm gonna kick this guy's ass in the tournament. Yeah. Like I'm gonna be a badass. So. So cool. Um, all right, Josh, what about you? Where, what's yeah. your favorite? I mean, the whole the whole cast is incredible. There was not a bad actor in it. Um, I do want to uh, bounce off of what Jeff said. The thing I liked about Sarandon as the villain is she says rather than doing, and that somehow made her scarier. Right? Whenever she just very casually is like, and when you're done, kill them. Right. Like there's that like that kind of that makes her scary. That makes her a villain. It's not that she's like shooting someone or something. Right. It's like it's 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 that type of power and authority. Yeah. Um, she was great. The uh, I've never seen because I haven't seen Cobra Kai, but the actor that played Jaime is just fantastic. And I know mm -hmm. he was really invested in this role. And so I really do hope they bring it back. Um, so he gets he gets to continue it and play it again. Um, I do also I just want to give props to this kind of goes beyond the cast, but to the director and the writer for the fact that they I feel like there are so many scenes like when we get the backstory of um, uh, Carpaxa and tying that to like the Reagan administration or when he gets his powers. And I, I read somewhere that the director described it as like um, Cronenberg for kids. I mean, it, they, <laughs> there were moments where I feel like the, the studio could have come out and said, this is too much. You've got to dilute this. And I don't know if maybe they did and they refused or the studio just didn't care, but yeah. they don't back down on some stuff or like even the dad dying, right? Like they don't back down on some stuff. And I think it really gives 
this movie more weight and gravitas in a film that is overwhelmingly fun. I mean, it yeah. just it does a really, really good job. And I just want to give it give it props for that. So nice. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think the dad the anytime the dad had a scene with Jaime, uh, I think those were very cool. Like yeah. where it, they work so well together as like when they're all together, like when either when they go to the restaurant at first to eat tacos and they're like, uh, you know, they got to fill in Jaime on all the stuff. Or when one of my favorite things is when they go to Jaime's job interview and they drop them off. Yeah, I know. That is so great. <laughs> <laughs> because, because it is like that. Sometimes, like, you know, if it's your first day of college, like your whole family wants to take you over there because nobody's ever been to college. Some, you know, like that is that a lot of that stuff I just found very relatable. Uh, also, I think so. Becky G voiced uh, Kaji, the the bug, the beetle. Okay, I think she was I great. Knew that was. Uh, you might have seen her. I think she's a musician, but you might have seen her in Power Rangers 2017. She was the Yellow Ranger. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you haven't seen that film, I think it's I I, I really like that movie. That's all right. Too. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I think she was great. I love that she. Kaji speaks Spanish. It's like because she, as 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 the more she fuses with Jaime, yeah. and the more their bond gets, uh, you know, they build that relationship. Like, of course, the the bug would learn um, Spanish because Jaime speaks Spanish. So like mm-hmm. that, like all that stuff plays out very well. Uh, and yeah, I mean Susan Sarandon, holy shit! Like she just evil. Like oh, especially in the flashbacks, like they do very subtle things to hint at how messed up she is of a human also the fact that they just like openly shooting at their knees like when she escapes the first time yeah shooting at her like it's not even like they don't even never mention like these are rubber bullets or like right yeah, or yeah. whatever like it's just like they're just shooting so they're just trying uh, to take and then i like george lopez on like jeff so <laughs> <laughs> no big issues there even if he i can see how Certain uh, uh, parts of the population would see Batman as a fascist in the DC world. Um, I I think sometimes that, he just goes to be criminals, right, for no no reason. Yeah, I feel like going I back think to. That... Uh, I was oh, gonna say, going back to SN- SNL. Have you seen that SNL sketch, the Thanksgiving sketch, where Bruce Wayne is giving out all the turkeys for free? Yeah. And and like all the people are complaining about how how fascisty Batman is. Because yeah. just gonna, they're like, thanks for really the free turkey, Mr. Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so, Josh, you know, you know, well, I, I was going to say, like, I, I feel like I feel like that line h- had to be in there, right? But it it plays with George Lopez because they clearly set him up as like the conspiracy theory kind of person, you know, who's yeah. very very left wing, which is good. But um, he's a Green Arrow guy. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I I feel like it was funny. Like after I was singing, George, Lo- if they had cast Lopez as the father, that would not have worked, uh-huh. right? He he needed that kind of character to just be able to just like totally like riff and you're to, crazy not in a bad way to the scenery, you know? So you know, crazy Uncle Qui Gon, you know? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> um, cool, cool. All right, uh, let's real quick touch on some of the and Josh has already talked about this a little bit. Um, I'll start with the, some of the look and the direction. Um, I think I'm glad they chose to do a practical suit. You can tell like it's there. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes they over rely on some of the CG and, you know, we've seen some of that stuff. Sometimes it doesn't look natural or real, uh, but every time Jaime is in the suit, like it just like it looks like he's living in it. Uh, I think also the transformation is really cool. Like when he puts it on, although it must be hell on a clothing budget for Jaime. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what <laughs> that's what my wife said. She was like, kind of ha- watching in the background. She's like, "That poor dude's got to get clothes every time." He-. I was or, like, "Yeah, it's just he has he's he needs- hanging dong whenever he takes it off." Yeah, so. he needs like Spider Man to find the like you know how Spider Man leaves his clothes in a little backpack all over the yeah. city. <laughs> exactly. Or he, he needs, needs to go- that, that chewing gum. He'll just leave his clothes in the chewing gum and throw yeah, it out yeah. So. so, but I thought that looked really cool. Anytime. The first scene of Jaime flying up into space. Very, I mean, I know you guys don't like Zack Snyder, but very reminiscent of the first time Superman and Men of Steel <laughs> went into space and f- like fully realized, like, you know, like the grandness of it and like how they're both kind of like amazed by it. So, yeah, but it was like, done right, not by Snyder, though. 
And that, that was man, done by a good director. Man of Man of Steel. This is a is my. If you made me watch a Snyder movie, I'm going to pick Man of Steel. Okay, I'll, I'll put it that way. Not the Guardians of Gahul. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, people love that film. I, it's not my cup of tea, but I have heard I others of that, that film too. But yeah, yeah, no. No. All right, uh, Josh, I'll throw it back to you. Did you have anything else about the look or the direction? I know you talked a little bit about it when you were talking about the performances. I, again, I just I, I I feel like they set a design aesthetic and stuck with it, and it worked really well. I did wonder. I know the suit is practical, but I felt like the 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 face mask reminded me a lot of like uh, Deadpool, and I wondered is the when he's in the mask is it CGI because. Cause like when the eyes would like expand and stuff, like I bet you it, have it, on. Cause it, it does. The one thing about practical suits is that the head sometimes looks a little bit bigger than out of proportion. Right. No, that makes like, sense. I bet, yeah. I bet he was wearing something like a helmet or okay. something that they, they definitely did some CGI stuff over CGI. there. Okay. But no, I it was at the behind the scenes. And, and I want to give credit. I think I've said this before on the show. I've never liked this version of the blue beetle costume but this movie convinced me like somehow seeing it in action and seeing it as a practical i was like okay i i get it now you know so yeah 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 jeff uh i uh I was working on something down here. What were you we talking about? <laughs> oh, do you have anything on the direction, <laughs> the direction, or the look of the show, or the look of the movie? Anything you want to point out? Oh, uh, you know, I love the. I love. Sorry, guys. Uh, I loved all the neon, the the city, the yeah. the whatever the I forget what the city is called, but, but it's completely yeah. different look from anything we've ever seen. You know, I, we see a lot of. Uh, I feel like uh, a lot of the DC stuff films in chicago so it all looks like chicago so this was very much a uh i don't i don't know how much where they filmed it or how much they kind of went back in and added cgi for all the colors and stuff but i was i loved that it was a different completely different environment that we were in yeah i think that yeah. it being i mean like it was still on earth obviously From the but, credits you know. i think they filmed a lot in puerto rico Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Puerto Rico, El Paso, and Decatur, Georgia. Yeah. Oh, they actually did film in El Paso. All right, because because it it looked like the Florida Keys to me, and I know they described yeah. it as the Keys at one point. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Cool. Um, Clay, now that you're back, did you have anything on the direction or the look or anything you want? To, anything? That's oh yeah. Out? <clears throat> I mean, you could see color everywhere. That was what was so cool. Is even when you're in Court Industries. Last Snyder. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was light emitting from doorways and elevators and stuff that even gave the feel like uh, that all that purple was was it was what that building was. Yeah, um, the shots were fantastic. The CGI was perfect. I mean, I'm trying to think of a bad CGI shot in the whole movie that kind of took me out of it, and I don't think there was one. No, they they very smartly did the last fight in the at night to really yeah. hide some of that. Because I I feel like that's where it would have put like if there was something bad it would have it would have been there probably like that came out because there's a lot of action at the end right when Car when Omac which is I still can't believe there was an Omac in a film that that's I know that was also kind of a cool thing I really dug was using that as as like a way to kind of tie those together um, yeah. I would have just liked to see like maybe Batman show up at the end and start looking at the OMAC stuff, but they blew it up. You know, like I wanted him to kind of, you know, eyeball it and maybe have plans. Or like like a, a Wayne Industries truck cleaning up or something like that. Because mm -hmm. Jaime was wearing a Gotham Law sweatshirt or jacket yeah, yeah. or something. So like that's where he went to school, which I don't know, going all the way to the university all the way to Gotham feels like, uh, I guess, I guess maybe you got a scholarship there from the Wayne Foundation, maybe. Yeah, um, <laughs> the inside of the Beetle vehicle. Oh yeah, I mean, like, how many times have we wanted to see a live action Beetle? You know, and they had it not only inside and out, showing it crawl up that castle. Oh I yeah, mean, and just even like okay, like the detail on like Ted Cord's gun, 
it's almost like a 50 style look it's very big uh you know and they had they retained that in all of his guns and his tech that he had there i even love the power glove the power glove yes. mm -hmm. the power glove showing up like it, all of it was just great now the one thing i do have uh like he he does have like the beetle cave <laughs> And he has his uniforms, but one is missing. Do we have any theories on why that one? Is, or I mean, we know I, he may have it, but I think he's why? wearing it. I one sure. of them, one is, of them is Dan update? Garrett's uniform, right? Yeah. The first one is Dan mm -hmm. Garrett's uniform. Then it's the court beetle the, from the, the the figure that you guys just showed. So I wonder if he is wearing. Also, I think one of the suits had like a little pillow around the mannequin because maybe he's gotten a little bigger. That's what I was thinking about. I was going, why is there a pillow around Yeah, I think it's section? because he's gotten a little bigger, so maybe he had to take out the suit. Like, yeah, so I don't know. This is going to be really interesting. Maybe we'll get a little time-traveling buddy to go. <laughs> and I, I loved did. all the tech was, like, you know, almost a, a pre-digital, like a very 90s analog yeah. type. Even the Look watch, right, is like an 80s Timex. But I also, I thought, it, I, I really loved how... Rather than just saying, oh, the, the this looks like Batman stuff, but like this. But then the explanation, which is, well, he had a sense of fun. Yeah. And I thought it was so important, right? Like all, one line, it's all you have to say, and you kind of get a sense of exactly what this character is like. He's not a dark brooding Batman. He's like, I'm going to fly into my bug ship. I'm wearing a bright blue costume, and it's going to be enjoyable. <laughs> so, yep. Right. He's a, what's the character from Watchmen? Um, oh, yeah, um, night, night, night owl. owl. Yeah. He's a fun night owl. <laughs> yeah, night owl. He's not having sex in the bug ship, let me tell you. No, no. Hey, you don't know what he's done in the bug ship. <laughs> when he was younger, maybe he got a little crazy. Now, that would be funny if they do have the sequel. We see Ted Cord, and Ted Cord uh, recounts stories of him and fire together, and they do do it and in the bug ship. Hallelujah starts playing. A hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Oh my god! Cool. All right, uh, to kind of close this out, uh, is there any comments on like how good of an adaptation this is from what you guys have read from the comics? I think there's a lot of Easter eggs and a lot of fun stuff, but any any anything on the adaptation that kind of jumped out? And I can get us kick started because I've actually read a lot of more of the recent Jaime Reyes stuff, and like the voice, uh, Josh Trujillo is currently writing the 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 Blue Beetle series, and uh, also wrote the graduation day, which was prior to this. And the voice, like, it sounds very similar. So, like, I don't know if if DC behind the scenes gave Josh like an update, like, or like, hey, this is kind of what the movie's like. Maybe you want to, you know, capture that feeling. Uh, but I like that a lot. I like that the books are. I like when the movies kind of push you back into the comics, or in when the comics start to reflect that stuff. Um, but is there anything else on the adaptation uh, on that, that you guys kind of want to talk about? I mean, the thing I enjoyed that you don't get in a comic book is the transformation because it was almost a full body horror. The way yeah, yeah. it en encapsulated his face and then got in his mouth and teeth and he just is screaming. Like, you don't get that out of the comic book page unless your artist is just knocking it out of the park. But... I really felt like that body horror moment where he's just being eaten by these nanobites or whatever the scarab was putting across his body was just the coolest. Well, and I think you might have missed this. Josh was saying in an interview with the director, he said he was trying to go for like Cronenberg for kids. Oh, um, yeah. So, so I think just based on your description now, I think he nailed it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I. I like all this. I, I think Victoria Court is back in the comics now. She's part of. The, she's a big part of this main arc. So this is the first of, I'm reading of that character as well. Um, and I just haven't read as much. Unfortunately, by the time I got to reading comics, um, Ted Cord Blue Beetle had just died. Like he had just been killed. Yeah. Uh, and he hadn't been brought back yet. Uh, so so there's not a lot that I've read, but I don't know, Kyle. From the stuff that you've read before, is there anything specifically you like to see adapted? Um, no, just the, bring. I want to see Ted come in. I want to see Ted. Ted. Yeah, you know. And if and if if the rumors that I was re or they were announcing as to who they're supposed to be playing Ted. Um, oh God, we have to look. Ted Lasso. They were announcing Ted Cord. 
Uh, yeah, they do from Jason Ted Lasso. Sudeikis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember though, they were, they were talking about Sudeikis about being Ted Cord. I was, oh, I was that'd be perfect listen. casting. Yeah. I was trying to listen to the voice. Like, is it Jason Sudeikis? But they modulated enough where there's like they can kind of leave it open to really anyone they cast. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I like I like him. As, I well, think he'd be good. And we already know, like, uh, what? How do you pronounce his name? Jaime the, I, Zola. Ma, Maduera. That's what was it again? Maduera. No, how was his first name? Oh, Reyes. Jaime Reyes. No. no, the actor's real name. Oh, Solo Maduera. Solo. Yes. So, okay, Solo. Yeah. Yeah. So like, they were announced. Like, uh, they were announced. He's actually one of the three actors. They were. That's actually coming back for the new updated universe. Yeah. Guns universe. Yeah. 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 I was but his whole family has to come back. It can't just be him because they're oh, well, they are they're, they're the, same, the actors. Like you know, it's, it's Amanda Waller is coming back. It's Zolo and then uh, a peacemaker. That Cena will be back as peacemaker. We need a we need a one shot of Nana uh, in the revolutionary days. To yeah. me, I've always wanted to see like a Legends of Tomorrow type ship. Wait a sec. That that starts off a DC movie and then it's just the remainders of this DC universe and it's Jaime. Maybe Wonder Woman. Uh, what? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, oh, okay. Yeah, just whoever you would save from this universe. And I feel like the Doom Patrol should be saved. Like, I would love to see them, like, leave this universe in a crisis-like uh, atmosphere. Well, that's what they're doing. That's what they've already announced. I mean, it's not just the animated, but eventually, I think they're leading to the live-action crisis movie. They're, they're trying to they're going to work up to a national crisis in the 100 Twitter Earth movie, too. They, they should just reverse Marvel. They should have a crisis movie first with all these superheroes in it and then deconstruct it down to them trying to live in these new universes and introduce who they are through that and just have a fucking big ass movie to start with but I, yeah. I want to go right back to earlier when clay said that doom patrol is like the greatest comic book series out there how about a peacemaker i think so i no, think they're they're wow. awesome series i'm sorry I, that, yeah that only... was awesome but it's i i don't know yeah I think Doom Patrol overtakes it only on the fact that it's also a very faithful adaptation of a very specific run. Yeah, I haven't read a Peacemaker show that a piece, I haven't read a Peacemaker book that feels like that show. I think they're kind of leaning that way now. Yeah, yeah, but, but, yeah, but yeah. overall, as a series, I thought it was. Fun. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I mean, what, what Loki series? I mean, we brought up Loki, and what series was Loki being? You know, faithful to? I mean, it was its, its own thing. So yeah, true. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Well, let's go to the. Well, what about right? that? Uh, what about that Generation X movie that uh, <laughs> Jeff, we talked about a few Jeff. weeks back? Don't make me drop you out of the. I, I can't movie. believe none of you fuckers are talking about Agents of Shield. God damn it! <laughs> no, no, no. What about the awesome Power Packs? Uh, uh, you know, uh, pilot <laughs> yeah. that they made. Hey, yeah. you know there what? Was... I should do. I should just start having random viewings, and I'll pull up all these and just have like live. Uh, watchings of Power Pack, Gen X, and all the 90s stuff you got. Don't, don't forget the oh, Happy Fury. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got your uh, your second best uh, Nick Fury ever. <laughs> I hope um, if we get a multiverse that we do see white Nick Fury meet black Nick Fury. Oh, they point at each other. Yeah. No, no. no. Yeah. What about it? What if we get pull three? <laughs> get pull three, we actually get a, the Hoff as Nick Fury in there. That could happen. I really dig that. I dig that idea of like a, a, a Hasselhoff showing up as Nick Fury and then him and hit, hit him and Deadpool just having exchanges. Oh nice. Okay. Just to close out the Blue Beetle talk, uh, if you follow us on Letterboxd, we, you probably already know what our score is, but we're going to score this from 1 to 10. Uh, I'll start with Josh because I saw you posted it on yesterday. Just giving away the product for free. Uh, what what's your score for Blue Beetle? Oh, out of 10. Uh, ten, yeah, nine or ten. I mean, it just just go in for fun. Again, I want to reiterate what Leonard Kim said earlier. It's the 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 f superhero film genre needs movies like this. It needs yeah. movies like this and the Flash, and you know, it needs comics like Fantastic Four. It just it needs things that are not. Not trying to be like so dark and brooding, like we had that in the mid '80s. Like, give us some fun back, and these things are doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. So fun and color, fun and color. Yeah, yeah. Snyder, sorry. Jesus Christ! I'm gonna do a supercut of all the times you said yes, Snyder, on this episode. <laughs> That'll be I'm our first do a supercut of every time that you said yes, an Apple event. Or yeah. just do, just do the ending with uh, with uh, a voiceover of, of 
to Josh going, yes, Snyder. <laughs> I'm going to feed it into an AI and then do and have it do. Uh, yeah, it'll change the tone. That's right. I love Zack um, Snyder's Jeff, film. Jeff, you great. got a score? Uh, I'm going to give it a. Uh, I'm going to give it an eight. A good solid eight. I figure it's. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not a perfect movie. What is? But, uh, okay, it's all because it's super, super duper fun. <laughs> And yeah, George Phillips is really sick out of the movie, huh? Two two points off, uh, and I'm done. Uh, I I also agree with uh, Leonard that we do need some younger like stuff that is for because kids are going to grow up to become the paying customers eventually. Yeah. So we need something like we that introduces them, like we did. Yeah, that introduces them uh, at a fun level so that they can grow up. And then, you know, 15, 20 years from now, we can get the dark Paw Patrol reboot. Jesus. Uh, and that's what I, that's what I'm looking for. We need to, any more propaganda. <laughs> Copyhead, that's what we need. NCIS Paw Patrol. Uh, Jack Snyder present <laughs> Paw Patrol. Give me oh, a dark right. bluey. Uh, a that's dark, a dark bluey. That sounds yeah, like dark a bluey is something that's also you can talk about it over in Amsterdam it's as well. Bluey, I said, this is our family show. It writes itself. <laughs> oh, David uh, Fincher's know. bluey. Clay, <laughs> what's your score? Nine. <laughs> uh, it's a solid nine. I, okay. I, the only reason I deduct a point is we is some of the things that we, some of the scenes and moments that are in this, we've seen in other films. Uh, I mean, it is the right choice and they, and it does play out better. Uh, but yeah, most, for the most part, the only thing that kind of varies on his origin is the fact that his whole family's involved and aware of who he is from the jump. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It to, to, to build on Clay's thing, it does do a good job of avoiding the tropes of like, spider-man and iron man and like we've seen a lot of these movies already that this movie could have been yeah so and it kind of it does it does a good job of like we know you've seen this before so here's a little it, bit of it and then we're gonna side the, the, the only trope it couldn't avoid was the shang chi of cutting a bus in half yeah that was so weird <laughs> yeah. that it was just in two different origin movies we just got somebody get a bus cut in half destroying weapon it's designed to protect its host to say that you want Sometimes it does what you want, and sometimes it doesn't. I, I, uh, <laughs> I didn't, okay. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even think about that, but yeah. Because, I mean, like, we, we see the Ted Cord bomb that's like the Stark bomb that we see at the beginning of WandaVision. Oh, yeah. We have that moment. We just have a lot of moments that we've seen in other superhero films, and and, and uh, it doesn't reduce the story, but if you're knee deep in all of the comic book stuff, like most of popular culture is now, uh, you know, you may get kind of tired of seeing those tropes play out, but they work and it, and it helps support the story. Yeah. Do you think that Night Owl ship also has a bug fart? Or an owl <laughs> fart feature? God, I hope God, so. I hope so. <laughs> it's a, it's a, uh, what's the thing owls eat that you have to, they regurgitate up with the bones the animals eat? It's oh, that. Oh, God, I don't food. know. Like a pellet? Owl pellet. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. He, he has a so magical the, owl pellet. The owl ship <laughs> takes in its enemies and then spits them back out. Okay. That's very distracting for sure. <laughs> Kyle is um, not going for it. I was gonna, I was gonna write this in the thing, but buses also get destroyed in the Eternals and in the uh, Doctor Strange uh, yeah. multiverse of madness. Oh yeah, comic book heroes have it out for buses. <laughs> Leonard Kim dropping facts in the chat. Yeah, some of fandom yep. has turned the word fun into a negative, and I just don't understand that type of thinking. Makes no sense. <laughs> I don't know what people have against fun. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, I'm gonna give this a nine as well. I had it at a four stars, which I guess it's like an eight, but I'm gonna bump it up to a four and a half. Uh, just real quick, I, I did check out the special thanks uh, to creators. Of course, we have Keith Giffen because a lot of the work on Blue Beetle uh, nice. and the Justice League International. Paris Collins, Will Eisner, and Mike Gordon are all kind of grouped together. I imagine they created the, the original Dan I Garrett so. Blue I, Beetle. I think the, the original Blue Beetle came out of the Eisner shop, right? Yeah, or, or I think so. It? it was that company that DC acquired. Was it Fawcett? Charlton, Charlton, Charlton. 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 Yeah. I always get those. Fawcett is Shazam, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Cully Hamner, Dan DiDio, and Joe Gill. I think they worked on more recent Blue Beetle stuff with Jaime, 
and John Rogers, Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby, and Lynn Ween. I don't know if maybe they created OMAC. I think that's OMAC. Yeah. Or I mean, was, Kirby's definitely OMAC. It was like yeah, the, Kirby's one OMAC. of the very last things he did for DC. Yeah. So, um, so there you go. Go check out some of the, their comics. Maybe we can make a list. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll see if I can put something together. Uh, all right. 